Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, welcome back. And uh, we were addressing this whole thing of um, you know what if the church um, is in a you know early stage of just being uh, experimenting with worship or different forms of worship or not not really open at all. You know that vision is not there. So yeah, so like we were saying, you know it's it's going to take some time. And we need to be one needs to be patient uh, to do that, and it can be frustrating, you know, because if it's a church structure which involves a frequent change of leadership, like for example, certain churches have pastors um, uh, for maybe four years, five years, and then there is a change in leadership, and and when that pastor comes, you know, there is a there may not be a continuing. Uh, continuation of the vision, uh, the same kind of vision, and so on. So, um, so then it goes through an up and down kind of a season. So that makes it a little more complex. Um, I mean, a little more uh, challenging. Um, like in our own uh, like Methodist Church journey, I we saw that um, uh, actually I should back up, you know, and and look at the the, the CSI Church background that we came from. So, uh, of course, the church service had um, only hymns, and it was liturgical worship, which means prayers were read through the, you know, the Book of Song, uh, common worship, and so on. So, um, so that was what we grew up with. But then, in the youth group, we experienced a lot of freedom, and there was a really uh, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And uh, you know, looking back, I see that it was one of a you know the revival moves of God uh, among the youth in, in our city, and um, you know, we were just part of it. And so, so in the youth uh, group, or we used to call it as youth fellowship. So in the in, the, in those meetings, there used to be you know um, a lot of freedom. Uh, people were born again, and so it was a body of believers. And then, of course, unbelievers would also come just to see what was happening. And um, so there was a more of the spirit. There was, um, you know, even praying in tongues, and you know, it was, it was just crazy. You know, like you think of, uh, you know, a very traditional church, which is not, uh, you know, uh, does not have any of these things in the main worship time, worship service, but, um, you know, worship service being the, the entire, you know, service time. But in the youth group, all these things, all these things were happening. Um, you know, people were. Uh, you know, crying in worship, and uh, you know, very free in worship, uh, praying in tongues, and and all that was just common there. So, so God is doing something in that group, right? So, and the, that group's uh, burden was, hey, we need to see the same thing in the church. You know, what we are experiencing, we need. The entire church to experience. So that was the thing. So that was a cry, right? So is to pray and uh, fast and pray. Uh, one, I think I remember one Sunday in a month, and um, for the church, uh, for the church, for the uh, people who come there, for the elders, for all age groups. And I'm just saying, Lord, we want them to experience what we are experiencing. Um, and so, a change would come, but it was very, uh, it was minimal. Right? We would experience. Um, people getting saved, like people would, um, uh, we especially the youth, we would call them and invite the youth of the church uh, to be part of the group. They'd come, they would get born again. They will receive Christ. So a change was coming to them and their families. Right? Uh, what we could see as um, traditional, nominal um, church families now. One member of the family or some members of the family were getting born again, experiencing salvation, encountering God in worship, and saying, "Oh, hey, this is a possibility. This is how we can." And so, having the same desire, what we have, we we want for the church, right? So, um, so that group kept growing in number, you know, so having the passion, having the burden, and so on. So, well, God uh, was so faithful in orchestrating things that. Um, I remember that one point in in the in the history of that church where there was this worship minister who came and who taught and uh, his name is Steve Cuban. I don't know if he's still around. Uh, he taught uh, on worship and it was it was amazing. Like he was whatever we are learning now, he taught then. 
right? Into this traditional church, talking about the expressions of worship and praise and a song and uh, how music has a part in it, but it's not the whole thing and all that. So that Sunday, I happened to, I, I was actually working uh, outside. I had moved out of Coimbatore, so I just used to uh, visit. But that particular Sunday when I visited, he had taught on Friday, he had taught on Saturday. That Sunday when I visited was a totally different church worship service that I you know, experienced. People were singing hymns, but they were raising their hands and singing, you know, lifting up. There's so much of freedom. He, and he came and he led for a short time, uh, playing the keys. And you know, during that time, and there's so much freedom, young and old and everyone. I had never seen like that. Right. So yes, to answer Nina's question, yeah, it is possible. Uh, but we need to keep at it. It's going to be small incremental changes, um, but it will come, right? So um, the other th one thing we need to understand is the church structure uh, or the way things are done, and you know um, that can put limits. If you if you look at it, you know typical Anglican church in in London um, called the Holy Trinity Brompton, Brampton, I think HTB as it's called. All these churches experienced the move of God. There was revival. Uh, these are typical Anglican churches, but you know, revival, the move of the Holy Spirit in these churches, and uh, everything changed. They kept, they still had their traditional uh, expression of worship and study of the word and so on, where people would, you know, there was this whole thing of people wearing robes and the whole choir wearing robes and walking in and this procession and walking out. So all those things were there. But they would also, you know, have an additional service or a contemporary service, and and even within that service, you know, there were so many things that God started moving. They experienced the hand of God um, in signs, wonders, miracles, and you know, people getting filled with the Holy Spirit and gifts being released, and so on. So, um, in a you know, is in a in a typical Anglican, very traditional, conservative church, right? So, well. So that's the thing, you know, it's a long term thing and uh, one needs to have a burden for it. And of course, the very the changing pastor thing doesn't really help in the long run. But, um, well, when people are hungry and they won't, they won't you know, uh, people are also getting exposed to different what God is doing around the world, right? Uh, in our city, around the world. And so there is a hunger in people. So. Uh, in among the believers, and which should be, I think, uh, which is just increasing. So, yeah. So, change would come, right? Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? Um, based on whatever we have learned so far, even in, uh, you know some some of the topics that we addressed earlier. Um, you know, um, we, need, we just need to keep that freshness when it comes to um, when it comes to worship, ministering in worship, right? See, the thing is, yeah, we say, okay, we worship. There's so much freedom. You know, we are a, maybe you could say a charismatic church. Um, there's so much freedom. We don't have. Um, um, you know, we are not for, you know, uh, too much order and all that, uh, or, or you know, restricting uh, order and all that. But then we need to be cautious because, you know, the very thing that we do, we, that we say is freedom and freedom and expression, that itself can become a ritual, right? That itself can become a uh, a routine and the ritual. We need to guard against that. You know, saying that okay, these are some songs that I will sing in the beginning, and this is, these are the words that I will say. These are the things that can, that itself can become a meaningless, um, you know, uh, a, a, a ritual without the life of the spirit, right? So we need to guard against that. Right? Okay. Okay. So. Um, if there are no questions, what I uh, what I thought was that we'll uh, like look into uh, one other aspect of um, 
one second, sorry. Yeah, one other aspect of um, um, you know of worship, which is uh, you know songwriting, you know some basic things of songwriting. Like uh, I, I know I'm, I'm I'm really not an expert in songwriting, but uh, you know I've been part of it, and so we can look at some of the the theoretical aspects of it, and probably that will help uh, move into songwriting. I know, I know some of us have been part of the uh, you know the, the uh, creative arts conference and where there was songwriting and so on. So you're part of it. So uh, this could be something familiar, right? Um, OK, so when it comes to uh, songwriting, OK, let me just share the screen. OK, uh, a song itself, right? Um, when you think of a song, um, sorry, yeah. So when you think of a song, right, um, it's, it's I, I know we have different parts of the song. We look at it. But um, it's it's good to write a song from the place of a hook, right? So what is a hook? You know, it's that part of the song that that sticks in your in your memory. You know, when you think of a song, you know, it's it's that song that it's that part, you know, that melody, the words um, that have really you know that stay with you, and uh, call it the hook. You know, it's 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 what hooks you, you know, to the song. And to the, um, and it doesn't let go of you. You know, it just there, stays there. And sometimes you wish, oh, I wish I could stop singing the song and singing over and over again. It's just there. Um, so, song hook. You know, several people have uh, talked about it. So it's just a minute. Yeah. yeah. So it's that part of the song. Mary Dawson, a uh, songwriter, she says that the uh, the that expresses in just a few words and notes what the song is about. Okay, uh, it's that part of the song. So let's think of some song and see if we can identify a hook. Okay, so any familiar song that you can think of, maybe that sang this morning, Bible College, or Any any song, anyone? Um, Prince or Nikhil and any song that you sang, you guys sang yesterday. Um, I, I'm not able to hear. Um, Um, is there a problem with the audio? Okay, I'll I'll just move on. Um, I don't know if you're trying to say anything. Okay, so let's let's just uh, look look at a song. You know, like uh, a, a song. Let's say. Here I am to worship. Okay, I'm sure you've heard this song. Here I am to worship. The song starts like this. Um, the words go like this: "Light of the world." Right. Sometimes people call it the light of the world. Also, the title of the song: "Light of the world." Um, you st light of the world. Okay, you step into darkness. Right. This is how it starts, right? Light of the world, you step down into darkness and uh, open my eyes and let me see. Right. So, um, title of the song is "Here I Am to Worship," and the hook for that song, if you can think of the song hook, is that part. Here I am to worship. That is what stays in your mind. That is what is the chorus, which is what is the emphasis of the song here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you are you are my god right um so that is the hook of the song so we see that there are sections of the song which really um 
which really draw us, which really um, you know capture us and stay with us, right? So, and that song, that those words of that chorus is what the whole song is about, right? So it's a, it could be a musical idea, uh, a phrase, you know, it could be a melody, that's uh, that's a hook. So uh, to start the writing of a song, you can actually start from a hook. You know, there are many ways. You know, this is just one approach, right? Um, the it melodically, uh, what is pleasing, what is repetitive, and when you express that in words that um, that you want to actually convey, um, then it becomes a very strong hook, hook right? So, and uh, Hurston tells in sometimes the title or the key lyric line that keeps recurring or repeating, and a memory, a memorable catchphrase or melody, right? So, so that is what the uh, uh, hook is. Okay, so there could be, you know, several categories that you can think of. You know, it could be a petition, like a prayer, uh, saying, you know, um, Lord, this is, uh, Lord, I need you. A petition, you know, um, Lord, I come to you. Let my life be changed. Petition, right? Um, what else can be a petition? Uh, songs like that. Right? Um, change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. Uh, may I be like you. Right? Petition. And uh, some of the Hindi songs that we can see, you know, um, anything that you can think of, you know, it's a petition, it's a prayer. Right? So we see that. Right? Invitation. It's an invitation. It can be an invitation for the Lord to do something in our lives. So it is it is more like petition, but it's also an invitation. It could also be an invitation for people, you know, like a song like Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to um, you know. Um, so that can also be it that it can be also inviting people into worship. Right? Um, then we have declarations, declarations, things that you're declaring, saying something about God. Uh, and uh, or about yourself, what you want to do. Um, so declaration and also descriptions. Right? It could be describing certain things about God, an aspect of God, and, and so on. Very close to declaration, right? So, yeah. Um, so start with an idea. So it's good to start with an idea that you are very passionate about. Okay, so what is the fresh or recent revelation that you have about God? Okay, so what is the recent revelation, understanding that you have about God? You know, what is it? The re what is it that most recent uh, thing that you've learned about God, you know, and it, it came so powerfully that you can't shake it off. Right, it's just staying with you, and so that can be something that we can, because that is something that has captured your heart. Maybe the love of God, maybe the fact that God, God's grace is available, or, uh, or the fact that um, you know the power of God, or whatever it is, you know something that, that has freshly come upon you and you can't shake it off. You know, it stays, it, it is with you. So that is something that you can start off with because it's it's there. You know, it's it's there in your thoughts. It's it, you. That's something that you're constantly thinking about. So that is something that we can start. Um, or it could be, you know, what topics do you feel that we as a church should be singing in this season? You know, maybe the church is going through a difficult time. You know, to be reminded of the goodness of God. Maybe the church is going through a, a you know a, a time of experiencing a great move of God, right? So to acknowledge that. Excuse me. So, and to acknowledge that, and to thank God for that, and uh, to be excited about that, and to tell the world about that. Right? So, so these are things. Right? Um, it could be even be a prayer that's that's on your heart over and over again. You know, sometimes these things are there. You know, God, we need change. Our city needs change. God, our city needs you, Lord. Uh, we need change. I need change, oh God. Or I need a breakthrough, God. Um, or things like, you know, God, make me a soul winner. 
or you know um a petition it's a prayer it's a petition something that you're asking god and it really uh, is a preoccupation you know with you it's just something that comes over and over again maybe it's a personal time maybe it's a corporate time this is something that is on your heart right so that can be something that you can start off with or um it can be a series that the church is uh, studying right or what is being taught by the by the pastors uh, of that church so what is the you know what is the church studying what is the series that the church is doing and or uh, what is the life group you know uh, learning together right so so we can ask that question you know, can i sing about this right can i sing this um i remember once the fir very first um the the few songs that we actually wrote as a team it came at a time when um when pastor ashish was doing a series on the psalms and it, it was not not in church but he was doing it for for tv right so that time we had we were on god tv so it was a series of psalms that he was doing and typically he was doing messages on psalm 100 and um and several other psalms you know psalm 1 and so he has given i'm doing these these topics you know this six uh, or eight topics that I'm doing, so uh, messages that I'm doing. So, so then we we took those psalms and we said, okay, can we, you know, can we take these psalms and write a song? Right. So, so that is something that we did. That is that is how we started off, you know, saying that okay, we are doing something. Uh, this is what the pastor is teaching, and he's teaching on this. So as we study the scripture, as we study these psalms. Uh, what ideas are coming? What is God speaking? What is God saying? And and that's how you know we started writing. And and the very first song that we wrote was from was from Psalm one, "Come Alive," right? So that that uh, when you read through Psalm one, you read that okay, uh, this is the life of a man who delights in God, right? Um, so he does not do certain things he does not stand in the path of the sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful and and all that it says and then but he you know in in his word in god's word uh, he meditates day and night and uh, uh, he delights in the law of god and and so on and and then it describes you know he's like a tree that is planted by uh, rivers of water whose leaves will not wither he'll bear fruit in season and all that so it is literally you know the picture that we got was about you know, being alive, really alive, uh, which is the opposite of uh, death and decay and corruption and being alive because it's like a tree that is rooted by the waters of water, by the by the by the waters, and drawing its nourishment and everything from life itself, and so to come come alive. So um, so that's how we started. You know, um, come alive, come walk in. You know, uh, uh, we walk in your presence, and and so on, so many other things, right? So, um, so that's how it started. So it can start like that, right? On a topic, on a theme, on a particular passage. So these are uh, things that actually uh, God can inspire us to write. Okay. Okay. So um, let's look at. Okay, let's look at the building blocks of a song. Right? So, so I think all of us know this. This is familiar information. In a song, there are different parts of the song. Right? There are verses. Right? So these are um, that could multiple verses. Verse one, verse two, verse three, and so these are you know the each verse could uh, is connected to the theme of the song, and each verse. Um, it's like a paragraph, right? Small paragraph. Each verse uh, addresses that, right? talks about that, uh, brings focus to that. Right? Uh, just trying to see what song we can look at. Um, let's say, let me just get the words. Um, okay, I'll just take that same song, uh, Here I Am to Worship. Okay, I just take the lyrics. Okay, 
Um, okay, so um, let me just show you that. Okay, so um, so this is what we have here. Okay, here I am. Uh, let's look at verse one. Okay, light of the world, you steps in. You stepped into darkness. Open my eyes. You let me see beauty that made this hard adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Okay. Verse two. King of all days, so highly exalted. Glorious in heaven above, humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. Okay, so it's about it's it's is giving a story. It's talking about the Lord stepping into earth, coming into darkness from that light, right, and doing something for me, something personal, right, uh, in my life, opening my eyes, causing my heart to adore, and so on, bringing giving hope in my life. And similarly, the second verse also, same thing, but then it, uh, same story, right? Same theme, but it addresses it a little differently. It says, the description of God being the king, highly exalted, glorious in the heavens, but he humbled himself and he came. Right? What we see in Philippians, right? Um, became poor, right? Put on. Uh, the, the form came in the form of a bond servant, and you know, uh, so all that, right? And the chorus is in response to it. So, what is the chorus of the song? This section, right? So, these two are the verses they are they're like telling a story, narrating something, or bringing out a theme. And the chorus is a culmination, you know, it's saying, Here I am, so this is my response. So a chorus can have that kind of a direction. You know, here I am, God. This is my response. Here I am to worship you. So you step down into darkness. You open my eyes. You cause my heart to adore you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. This is, this is what I do because you're lovely. You're worthy. You know, same thing. Verse two, describing. Okay, King. You know, you are you are the King. You're highly exalted. Humbly you came. You became poor, you take, took on the form of a bond servant, here I am to worship. So a chorus is repeated right after the verse just to bring home the response, here I am God to worship. In this particular song, that is it. right? Uh, that is what uh, you want to be done. Okay. So you see this over and over again. Then, um, so that's the uh, verse, that's a chorus. Then we have another section which is the bridge. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Okay, that's repeated. So it's it's a slightly different direction, right? But but it kind of gives emphasis. It's like a it's it's called a bridge. And a bridge. What does a bridge do? Um, a bridge. What it does is connects to land masses which could be separated right and a bridge could do that a bridge could actually connect two ideas with a with a fresh new idea you know this whole idea of god coming down for me this whole idea of you know me responding in worship because of that encounter and all that now there's another idea here's another theme saying that while i am in awe and wonder of you I have this, I have this question. I have this realization. You came, you took my sin, and you know, it's like I'll never know the worth of that, the true worth of that. Yeah, to see my sin upon the cross, so it's like a an idea that connects two different ideas. Right? So that's what we call a a bridge. Okay, so now let's get back to. Um, um, uh, the descriptions. Okay, so yeah, so uh, chorus is also called a refrain, uh, which means to repeat, and the the chorus is usually 
most times the hook of the song right now this is a song you when you remember any song right uh, this is the part that you remember about the song right this is the section that you remember about the song when somebody says okay the song what a friend we have in jesus you know you, what do you remember about the song it's not uh, you know can i find a friend so faithful who will all my sorrows share that is not what comes to your mind that is not what you sing what comes to your mind is what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear you know that's what comes to your mind right so so this is the hook of the song the chorus most times is the hook of the song right so it contrasts the verse uh, lyrically rhythmically it's different from the verse the way the verse is sung it's different uh, both music wise uh, rhythm wise etc and it's it has a higher dynamic when we, what do we mean by higher dynamic it means that the chorus for most of the songs has a lot more energy right because it's like the highlight of the song and it has a lot more uh, energy and a lot more emphasis you're singing it with a lot more and it's not like the rest of the song you're not singing with conviction but here there is a added weight to it right um, so that's the that's the you know the chorus uh, that's a refrain uh, of the song so it has a lot more dynamic when we say dynamics dynamics is you know when we when a song is maybe loud soft um you know that that's a dynamic right? dynamic of the song so uh, different levels of expression right so a lot more activity in the sense if the verse in the verse maybe you might be having a fewer instruments maybe they're playing a lot less and even the singing it could be a little subdued but when it comes to the chorus every, everything goes up several notches right the the drums the instruments are playing a lot more in terms of maybe even chords a lot more in terms of you know uh, the kinds of beat, kind of beat the drums you know is engaging a lot more playing um you know if if he's playing um let's say twi twice if he's playing the snare twice every four counts you know one he's, he's just playing the snare on the two one two three four right? on the two and the four but now he's going to play the snare drum on every count right on 1 2 3 4 and right? he's playing it so that what is it it means the activity is increased right dynamically it's become more so a chorus will have that right yeah so bridge connects two ideas and it refreshes our interest again brings back the focus to the chorus and the uh, the bridge brings back the focus to the chorus and the verse right so these are ways we can describe you know these different sections of the song okay um okay so let's look at one more thing um sorry okay um repetition i think uh, uh repetition is also we looked at it repetition is something that is used for building a song section um chorus is repeated sometimes once twice sometimes the verse is also repeated before getting into the chorus um it is it is powerful and the reasons for it is that it allows for the truth to sink in right the first time you sing it maybe you're not really engaged with it, but the second time you sing it you are a little more engaged it allows gives the listener or the singer an opportunity for truth to sink in Right. and uh, so repetition for the sake of repetition uh, makes a person weary tired and disengaged but if it is done correctly if it is done well then or the right number of times then it can actually uh, bring a person deeper engage a person deeper in worship okay what else okay there there could be five types of repetitions right um okay maybe uh this can get a little 
complex. So maybe we'll okay, just for us to understand, right? Okay, you can repeat it. Uh, now here, actually, we're not talking about repetition of the song, but we are actually talking about repetition of how the song is written in terms of um, in terms of line one, line two, line three, line four, right? So that is what we're talking about in a song, in a verse. Uh, the kind of repetition that can have. Okay, for example. Okay, so um, so this could be a repetition like this, where the line one is repeated twice, and the line two or uh, can be you know line three and line four uh, is the line two which is repeated. You know, like. Um, there are variations of this, like it can happen twice, it can happen thrice, right? And then the fourth line is different. Okay. Um, you know, a classic example would be uh, let me just put that on the chat. You know, the song We Exalt Thee or I Exalt Thee. The chorus of that is like this, right? I Exalt Thee, I Exalt Thee, I Exalt Thee. Both line is O oh Lord, right? So, so these are different structures that we can think of, even when we are conveying those ideas. You know, it's a simple um, repetition of these lines, but the song is so powerful because of that, right? Um, you know, just think of it. If we sang the same thing, like uh, I exalt the O oh Lord, I exalt the O oh Lord, you know, like uh, H C H C as it's called, right? Then it may not be; it doesn't have that kind of an impact. Right? I exalt the maybe the same tune. Oh Lord, I exalt the Oh Lord doesn't have that kind of an impact. But when you repeat it thrice, and the fourth line, when you you know when you change it to to whom you're addressing, to whom you're exalting, then it becomes powerful. Right? So we could have um, variations like this. Um, also, every line, right? Um, I'm think, trying to think what song could have this kind of a, can you think of something which has uh, this kind of a repetition? A song in a chorus which has this kind of a model where um, the line is repeated is the same line all throughout. Um, OK, um, I can't really think of anything right now, but if you can, you can just put it in the chat. OK, fine. So um, so anyway, just to just for us, you know, these are different. Mo you can think of this when you're writing songs. You know, can, can I do it this way? Can I do it this way? Can I try the structure? Or can I try alternate repetition of lines, right? Or it's like a parenthesis, open brackets, close brackets. You know, the first line, last line, is the same, but then we um, change the, the second one and the that's sorry, second and the third, right? Okay, so we can intentionally think of all this, uh, and these are some simple steps that help us to uh, see. Unlike uh, unlike prose, or you know a letter that you write where you can just keep writing the ideas random ideas here a song is is more like poetry and it has a rhyme to it uh, it has uh, you know a repetition and so it is something that needs to be sung right so when you're singing it it cannot be like prose right because the words will not fit you have a tune and if you if you have you know if you're saying some things like a prose, it won't fit in that. It it has to the words need to be changed, and the words need to be sung in a certain way, or arranged in a certain way, for the words to fit for the idea to be conveyed. And so that's why it is it is more like poetry rather than prose, right? Okay, so uh, I think we'll stop here. 
and we'll continue next class any any thoughts any thoughts any questions anything at all okay um everyone's awfully quiet today that's fine um yeah so we'll we'll continue next class and um yeah we'll see you then right god bless thank you